Hello, uh, this is David Butler, and I'd like to present my portfolio. I used PowerPoint for this because it's pretty simple for me to click through, and uh, I broke this up into three galleries, um, and it's, we have portraiture, we have illustration, and we have studio. And there's a little about me at the end. So let's start with portraiture. This is my brother, Timothy. Um, and this was a few years ago, but it was when I first started really experimenting with watercolor pencils and with using a lot more color in my work, in my skin tones and things like that. I have a, a few that I've done like this, but this was the first in that series. And similarly with those colors is a portrait of my cat, Caesar. And this is watercolor uh, and colored pencil. And uh, the background's all watercolor and <clears throat> a little bit of watercolor in um, him as well. <clears throat> but this was another continuation with that series of experimenting with the colors because I find they can be so expressive. And this is my Frida Kahlo. Um, she's made up from Supertramp lyrics. Uh, Supertramp's a band from way back in the Beatles age. They're around the same time, and I grew up listening to them with my dad, and so it's pretty near and dear to my heart. And Frida's story is very inspiring to me as well, just how tragic and, you know, how much power was taken from her, but how she made such a story out of it. And next is my illustrations. Um, up first we have Pup in the Rain, and this is a piece from a children's illustration, children's book illustration assignment that we had for Lovey Peters. And it's the story of my mom, my mom's dog Pup, and how he came about, and how he kind of found her. And this is one of the, the well, the first one in the story how he was so sad in the rain and he does this now he sits in the rain sometimes but this was the main piece for that series and this is their moment when they meet and um this is all color pencil and i give it to her for mother's day but this is a bubble but it's on black and I, on black paper and i really wanted to Try to make those colors pop and um, kind of, you know, scream at you. So, and then finally is my studio collection, which is just kind of more of everything versus being in a specific category. This is Mrs. Scott's house, originally by Edward Hopper, and this hangs in the Mirror Museum at Randolph. And I really what captured me the most at first when I saw it was just how realistic he made these sunbeams on the hills and how it's like you can almost touch it. But it's there's nothing really to look at. It's just a house on a hill, but there's so much to look at at the same time and how he blends these, you know, sh harsh highlights and this really deep shadows is something that I am really striving to achieve and be able to use later in my work. And this is um, St. Valentine and his secret marriages that he performed. <clears throat> and this is pretty small. It's only a few inches um, square, or a few inches by a few inches. And this was... Um, this was a lot of fun because it's actually on a much bigger piece of paper and all of the details or the thumbnails and um, experimental colors and everything are on the outside of it. And this was one of the first projects that we did in design for Mr. LaFaso. And it took me quite a while, but it was very gratifying at the end and I felt very good about it. And it was the first time that I, you know, since I've been here at CVCC, when I took a step back and I said, 
you know, I'm glad that I'm here because I would have never been able to do this or create this if I hadn't been, you know, given the prompt to do it. And it just made me feel really good to be in an environment with everybody who is creating, you know, and who is artistic. And then uh, similarly with this assignment, we had to take word and use imagery to emphasize the word. And so I chose the word wild and I, I used all these different colors and the animals because of how diverse nature is. And I really uh, had a good time with this one. And um, this is my still life that we did in Levy Peters class or drawing class. And this was another one of those moments, <clears throat> excuse me, where I um, I was really happy to be given the opportunity to, you know, or to have the opportunity <clears throat> to be in this environment and push myself and look at everybody else's work. And it's been a real treat being here. And this is a uh, black and white perspective, which I don't do a whole lot of black and white now. I uh, used to when I was just sketching, but um, what I enjoy about about the graphite and, pens and paper is that you can get such tiny details into these small little areas where it's hard to do that with colored pencils. And this is my Retro Nouveau uh, typeface. I was kind of inspired by the Great Gatsby time period and the really, you know, flamboyant type of type of curves that we have here. And this was a lot of fun. I used my stencils, so this is three sheets of Bristol and it's ink, and um, and I. This is a real challenge, but I'm, I'm happy with the way it turned out. And this is a little about me. Earlier I was talking about this color in the back being representative of, you know, the inner workings of the, of the, the subject, this being Caesar, and earlier that portrait of my brother. I feel like, um, well, I think, let me just explain. It says, I'm inspired by the connections we make between people and animals. And every living being on this earth contains energy. Some people call, can actually see it and call this energy field an aura. And it's the distinctive atmosphere that seems to surround and be generated by a person. Shamans describe it as an intricate display of colors that vary and interact, illustrating the emotional, spiritual, and physical complexity of an individual. And I kind of, that's what I want to go for here and what I really want my work to do. I want to, if I'm doing a portrait, I want to capture that, the spirit of the person, rather than just what they look like, but I feel like that can be done in almost a literal way. It, I don't claim to be able to see these auras, but I think it's something we can all feel, and it's an energy and a, um, like an invisible string that connects us all together. And when we're with people that we love and with our animals and our pets, I think that those times and those feelings are really the special ones that are hard to describe. I think that art can do that in a way that words can't. And, you know, I hope to, and that's kind of what I've learned from being here is there's so much more to, there's so many, you know, different ways to do something. And... <clears throat> And after all of this, I, I, you know, after we finish grad with this semester and after graduation, I hope to get a scholarship at VCU and um, to further my my art education in a studio, and eventually to um, be a professor later down the road after I, you know, had a career and have something to teach. And lastly, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been a part of it with me and been on this journey, especially this last semester. And I want to thank Donna for all her hard work this whole time. And just, I really and thank you all for listening. And I hope that you have an awesome rest of your day.